Hello, I'm up here, X-Toy Cat, and all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, but all play and no work makes him something worse. And our relationship with work as a species goes weirder than just these phrases we invent, because there's this concept of something which everyone hates doing, which everyone regrets, and everyone only does because they have to, but yet everyone has to do anyway, and that is what work is. This is the third in a trilogy of old-style Let's Plays. In the first, we spoke about breakups. In the second, we spoke about the hard times in life. And so today, let's talk about about something equally important, work or jobs, uh, the idea of doing things that you don't necessarily want to do in exchange for rewards later, something which I think makes a lot of people feel broken and which makes them feel conflicted on the inside, but something which I would like to believe I understand fairly well about myself because I have almost always been self-employed with the exception of working for a few days designing apps for a uh, major logistics company you might have heard of. Um, I actually have always been self-employed and the reason as to why is because I would describe myself as being very money motivated in a way that I am shocked that not everyone would. It is the most mind-blowing thing to learn about the world that some people aren't motivated by money, that some people aren't like me and that they would uh, be somewhere at a certain time if they were going to get money in exchange or uh, I don't know, I use, uh, I try to use my washer and dryer at the cheap electricity hours so I can save money there or I try to book flights on certain days of the week if I can. I try to reschedule my life around it so that I can save hundreds of dollars on them because in my opinion, saving money or making money is really good because then you you have money to buy the things that you actually want to. I really think that money is great, or at the very least, uh, you know, ignoring the system of money. I think that having more money is preferable to having less. And yet, despite that fact, I think lots of people don't think that it is something which is enough to like motivate them to do things all the time. But ever since I've been 12, I have been working in some form. This is something which is maybe surprising because I don't think you're meant to work below uh, 14 legally in the UK. And realistically, it's like 16 by the time get a part-time job and 18 for a full-time job. So it's very, very weird to say that I've been working since I was 12. But even before I was 12, when I was 10 playing RuneScape, I worked out that some of my friends wanted RuneScape gold and they'd be willing to give me some of that real world money for it. And so I would sell people some gold. That's against the RuneScape terms of service, by the way. So please don't tell them that that's why I was mining some Mithril ore so I can make some Mithril bars to sell those bars to then sell for real world money. But that's exactly what I would do. It was a very big motivating force for me. And I think it's interesting that that for some people, a job is just like, well, I guess I've got some hours in my week I need to fill, and so I guess if they give me money in exchange, that would be nice. Or, you know, it's like, well, I guess I have to pay this thing, I'll get some money to pay for it. It's interesting to me how indirect some people's relationship is with money, but it really is the most motivating and powerful factor in the world that can determine so many of the things that you might choose to want to do. I think uh, it's uh, something worth at least thinking about and examining, but also beyond just the relationship with money, which I definitely think comes from uh, my upbringing bringing with not having very much. Uh, but I think there is a deeper talk about what is your relationship with work going to be like? Outside of the fact that work is what brings you money, it's worth saying what is the value of work by itself? And the value of work outside of, uh, you know, like the money aspect is probably the fact that if someone's paying, willing to pay you to do it, you're probably doing some value to the world or to someone at the very least you could say. If someone is willing to, I don't know, like pay you money so that you can look after people in a hospital, that probably says that looking after people in a hospital has value to the world. If someone is willing to pay you so that you can, I don't know, unblock their sinks, that tells you that people having working sinks has value to the world and you doing that will make people feel happier, so much happier that they'll be willing to part with some of their money which they had to work in some hard-earned way. I don't know, I think that that is the basic idea of jobs, right? Is that you have to do things for people so they can do things for you and it seems to me the only terrible thing about the system, the thing that really makes people regret it and really makes me feel or, I don't know, bad about being a human being is the fact that there are some costs to being a human that are just not avoidable. It's not just that you spend money on things you like. When you spend money on things willingly, it feels really good. But when you spend money on things you have to, it sucks. And so for my American viewers, that might be, I don't know, cars and car payments or, you know, transportation that you just feel like you, 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 you when you're using it, it's like a necessity. But when you pay for it, it's like, oof, that hurts. Or the other one I would say is housing. I think housing is the biggest one because we're so used to living inside. inside Inside is a revolution uh, for the world, by the way. Before humans invented inside like 10,000 years ago, it was, it, it was a weird idea that you could live like inside this set of walls that are temperature controlled and have all of these weird things. It's obviously expensive to maintain, but it still sucks that we just are brought up inside. And then one day it's like, this costs money, by the way. Hope you're willing to do things for other people so that they can sustain it. Something about that really sucks. And that's why I think we have a weird relationship with work. But I think there's even something deeper, which is the 
fact that generally speaking, people go to work so they earn money so they can pay for things they need to pay for, but then something weird happens, which is your relationship with work takes a turn because after going to work for a certain amount of hours a week, it starts to be drilled into you that that's what you need to do. To feel useful every day, you need to go to this work concept, and it's something that you might call a work ethic. I was always introduced to this because my mother worked an insane amount. She was a single mother during my childhood, but she had to work an insane amount, obviously, just to, I don't know, pay for uh, being, you know, like a, a house all by yourself in, in this economy, etc, uh, etc. Et but it meant that I was always waking up very, very late because that's when she'd be getting home from work, and that's when we could actually go home and sleep in our beds. Uh, but, like, uh, there would always be uh, stuff like that where it was basically she was working hard partially because it was, uh, you know, like, uh, it, it's important she was a waitress. Uh, she trained into being a manager, but went back to being a waitress because there is more tips and more earning potential. And also that earning potential is a, a directly affected by you. When you do a good job, you're more likely to get tips as a waitress, at least in theory. It feels that way. Uh, I, I, I feel, but anyway, even in the UK where there's not a great big tipping, tipping culture, you could still make a lot of money doing it. And so it's something she did a whole bunch of during my childhood. And it felt like something she was doing, not just because she cared about the money end of things, but also because it starts to feel like, yes, you work a lot, you become someone who works hard, it becomes a part of your personality and something which is really, really hard to shake. It is something I have picked up either because it's heritable or maybe because of the environment, that's just what I grew up around and it's what I think you're meant to do, or maybe because I have, in my opinion, one of the best jobs you can have. I talk about something I love every single day, I share some of the most interesting things about it, and I get to talk about one of my favorite things and even sometimes I get to have these deeper conversations, which my soul just kind of needs. I think that this is one of the coolest things you get to do. And I think it's almost a shame that it barely exists anymore because it is so popular. Nowadays, becoming a, air quotes, influencer means that you have to, like, play a billion different algorithms, hope they favor you one day. And even if they do, outside of YouTube, you get paid pennies per thousands of views you make because those platforms know that people will work for that rate. People will actually pay them to work for the sites if they feel like they're getting that fame from the, you know, the algorithm. And it's absolutely wild, in my opinion, that it works that way. But it is the way that the job works in the modern age. But in my opinion, I have one of the most satisfying jobs. It's one of the hardest ones sometimes, because again, it is so competitive. It's one of the hardest ones sometimes, because it's all about making sure, uh, not that I work out what it is I want to do, or it's not just about putting time into a day. It's about making the right piece of content at the right time in the right way, which can feel real hard and can feel like I'm sometimes spiraling against it. But when it works, it works really, really well. And so I would say that I have this almost addiction style relationship with work. I'm not just working so that I can pay for things sometimes. I'm working because I feel like I need to. I'm working because I'm like, well, I get to do this amazing thing. Who knows for how much longer? I better kill it while I still can. Strike while the iron is hot. And this is, I think, the downside of being self-employed. Obviously, I have been self-employed here on YouTube, but I've also done lots of other self-employed things. I ran my own websites when I was 12 and 14. I ran advertising-based businesses. And I also was at one point like a head content writer for a few like weird uh, clickbait sites. There's a there's a fun story back behind that as to how I paid for the YouTube equipment that I initially needed because again, I really can't clarify enough. I had no money. I always had to make whatever amount of money I needed for my life myself. Um, but one of the interesting uh, kind of points about self-employed versus regular employed is that you get paid for what you do, not for your time. One of the things that I think is the biggest curse or blessing is that almost every job out there pays you hourly or pays you by the month or whatever. And it means that you are literally in the most, again, not figurative, literal sense of the word, you are trading your life. You are trading your uh, time in exchange for money. And something about that is dark and depressing. I mean, it's always happening regardless because, you know, even for me, you could argue this is me trading my time to talk to you and do all of this stuff. But I think that it's a much darker thing when it's a company saying, yes, your time is worth this number of dollars per hour. And so when you go out to enjoy yourself and you spend this number of dollars per hour, it means that you're are directly wasting that much time. It feels like time is a credit, like in one of those dystopian movies. But the important thing is to say is when you're self-employed, you get paid for what you do. You get paid for the results, not for your time put in. You could put a whole day of work into something, and if you put, you know, if it has no external input or value to anyone, then you don't get paid. You could put an hour into something, and if it's the best hour work of your life, you might get thousands from it. In fact, I remember I negotiated uh, on one of my advertising websites when I was 14. I, I, I don't think the guy knew that I was 14, but I was negotiating a really big ad deal. And I remember it was hundreds of dollars because the guy owned several sites. He wanted them all to have uh, advertising. And I negotiated it in the span of like 30 minutes. And I was just, I just fist pumped so hard. I was like, Whoa! 
<laughs> it felt like I was justified in being one of the only people in my industry who didn't actually just wait for people to come to them. I actively sought out clients. And so when I landed a really big one, I felt really good about it. But the point is to say is that the uh, the weird thing about work is no matter what the format is, because, you know, there isn't just, I've kind of spoken about a work as if it's like you trade your time for money or you do things for money. But there's also all sorts of weird spectrums in between, right? Like there is, uh, you know, there's uh, stuff like caring where you get paid by a third party who is not the person you do things for. Or there are things like volunteering where you are effectively doing something valuable for someone and getting paid, but then immediately converting that pay back into uh, the thing that you're volunteering for. So it's a way to like spend and receive money at the same time. All those things like, I don't know, like uh, being a parent where you're having to, I don't know, make a whole new generation of people. You're not getting paid for it. In fact, it costs a significant amount of money, but it is still you doing net value. There are lots of cases where there are these weird like, yeah, you are still, uh, it, it kind of falls outside the traditional spectrum and definition, but there are lots of things in life you don't want to do. And one of the weird things about life, one of the weird Stockholm syndrome effects is eventually you learn to want to do them. You learn, uh, you, you find that the freedom in life comes not just from being able to do what you want, but from wanting to do things that you know to make the world better. That is something that I think is the weirdest part of this all. Because if I was to take one big lesson from everything that I've learned from my work experience in life, from uh, being a 12 year old till now, oh, that's uh, a solid uh, 16 years now. That's weird to think about. <laughs> but if I were to take all of that life experience combined, do you know what I take from it? Basically the exact opposite of what almost everyone else says, because sometimes you hear people saying, yeah, the only thing you need to care about in life is making sure you do something that's fulfilling or that you love. This is something that I feel like career counselors and schools will love to say. Like, yeah, the thing you've got to do most importantly is something you're good at or just something uh, that you really love doing. But I think these are kind of like two dimensions of what is important in a job, I think there are actually three separate things that define a job which is going to be good for you, but also one that you will want to do. And uh, it kind of come down, it comes down to where you are in life as to which one is important. Because I think in uh, the early phases of life, by the way, this is a very overwhelmingly large build. Uh, it's sad to be out never act, but I guess we'll have to go get some. Um, but it's interesting uh, that I would say in the earliest phases of your life, uh, the thing you need more than anything else, it's kind of like Minecraft, right? In the early stage of the game, you need wood more than you need diamonds. Having diamonds about wood would be worthless. And then later on in the game, wood is near worthless, while diamonds are more important. And this is kind of how a working life is. We basically split life up. So the first, I don't know, 20 or so years of life, you don't really have to work too much. Then the next 45 to 50, you have to work a lot. And then the last 15 to 20, or however many you live, you stop working again. There's basically like uh, concentrations of work that come and go. And uh, going a, a, a layer deeper than that, there is really an early phase of work where your goal more than anything else is to build up your own source of money. Until you are 20, various people will pay for you, whether that's your parents or the government or, uh, I don't know, like various uh, people around you. Um, you know, like it's a kind of an expected thing that you are dealt with by other people. And then at some point, all of the world's responsibilities uh, you know, become yours. And so the more money you earn, not only can you have, I don't know, nicer things if that's what you care about, but way more importantly than that, you can build up the bankroll to uh, deal with unexpected events. Like having money so that when something bad happens, you can pay for it is a life change. You know, like that is something that will relieve you of so much stress. And, um, you know, having the sort of money that you can have sitting around uh, that means that you, you know, like uh, just having enough that you can absorb an unexpected $500 expense will make a huge difference in your mental health quality. But then also if you can start to build, I don't know, the, the pensions and the retirement accounts, it means that later you won't have to worry as much about money so that you can go for those other things that matter. And uh, to me, something that is very important is this kind of like, I don't know, feeling like I did something that affected some people in some ways. Uh, but also that always will come secondary to making sure that you do something uh, that is, again, valuable enough to people that they're willing to, you know, pay for it or to uh, pay for your time or that you are willing to pay for it. Well, you know, someone is always paying for something, right? It's either you with your, uh, I don't know, like, uh, call it uh, opportunity cost or other people. And so knowing that you're doing something that is worth, you know, your time worth, your money worth, your effort is very important. But at the same time, I also would say um, that it's important to work out 
how you can like min max all of those fields working out uh you know if you again if you have a job that gives does everything you love having a hobby that is profitable is probably a good idea if you have a job that's very profitable but feels leaves you feeling uh like you could have a bit more uh, fulfillment having a hobby that gives you that is important working out what it is that your job does and doesn't do for you is one of the most important things because it almost you know people will talk about it as if it's the end all be all but it sort of sometimes is just the start. The it's the it's the bare you know it's the requirement from you, but it is also not going to be the thing that fulfills every need and want you have in life. And um, yeah, so uh, similarly, in case you're curious, I um, so uh, just for a personal example, recently on this channel, I've been doing uh, a couple of sponsored videos. I, I do very few of them. I get offered literally hundreds of them in a year, and I turn the vast majority down because I personally would like to only do them when they really make sense. Uh, that's where the HelloFresh stuff comes from, in my opinion. It's like a very good value one for everyone involved. Uh, similar with, um, I, I recently did a YouTube short ad, and the, those are the two big uh, kind of ads that I've done in the last year. Most of the time, I skip out on brand deals so that instead, uh, I you know, because you know they're very easy. It's like like you do 20 minutes of work, but you kind of sell a tiny fraction of your soul sometimes, which is which is okay. I'm not judging anyone who does that. But what I am saying is I would much prefer to work out products and things that people would actually really like. And even though they take months of preparation, so uh, IBX Toy Maps is a great example of this, working on Minecraft maps that I would love to play and so I, that I assume my audience would love to play is something that takes a really, really long time, especially to get it right to test, to go through the Microsoft processes. But it's something that I think brings brings a lot more fulfillment for the same amount of money as one of those sponsored deals might do. And uh, so it's something that I work on a lot and it's something that I find to be very important. And so similarly, um, I hope that you can find, um, I, I hope that in the same way that I have to make all these calculations and work out all these things, eventually I come to the conclusion that even though it takes a lot of time and effort and money, ultimately in life there is um, this need uh, you know, there is this list of responsibilities which feels terrifying. But if you can ever get to the point where you feel like responsibilities aren't something you have to do, they're something you get to do, you feel a lot better. And that's how I feel about making the maps. I'm so excited about what we're working on. That's how I feel about, um, you know, making the videos on this channel. I am very excited about the things coming this next week. I hope that you're excited to watch them, for example. Um, and uh, it's how I try to feel about as many things as I can do. Because ultimately, like so much in life, um, there is an inherent cruelness to many parts of the world if you really wanted to dive into it enough. And so it's kind of up to you as to whether you take that as inherent cruelness or whether you take it to be something else as to meaning like, well, uh, you know, the world might be inherently this way. But actually, there's a different frame of thinking which makes it not that. Or maybe you could say that makes you a useful idiot that is slowly, you know, I don't know, preventing uh, the collapse of it all and therefore preventing the, the coming of something better. That's for you to decide. All I have to decide, though, is that I love my, my crab over here and I love my volcano, but it's something which I think I really need to redo. So although I've enjoyed this free episode Old Style Let's Play series, and although I have no doubt we'll be returning, I will be going back to... Uh, doing some regular style Let's Plays on this channel. I hope you enjoy uh, that and the slightly different format we have to take because like I said with the balance of things, there is always a balance between what it is that you want most from you right now and what it is the world wants most from you right now and hopefully we find that on this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you for episode 604. I guess it will be fairly soon. Goodbye. Wow, 604 episodes. Jesus.